time for Social Women with your hosts, Pat Cruz, Amy Diaz, and Bronwyn Dannenfelser. Welcome back to our second hour of Social Women. I'm your co-host, Amy Diaz. Our toll-free number is 855-252-2020. We'd like to welcome Principal at C2 Communications, Carol Costa. Hello. Welcome. Hello, hello. hello. And you are here to chat with us a little bit about uh, the Rhode Island political scene and, of course, women in politics. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Carol Ann Costa grew up in uh, Gloucester, Rhode Island. My first political slogan was, Costa from Gloucester. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I ran for office when I was 18 years old, and I was just telling Brownwin that um, Charlie Fogarty was my running mate. So wow. Cool. He won, I lost. Mm. But that was okay. 18, 18. Is impressive. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, that's very impressive to get out there and say, okay, I'm just going to do this. Well, I have to pay homage to my uncle who just passed this weekend. Um, <laughs> my uncle Frank, who uh, was from sev- the Seventh Ward in Providence. Um, most of my family came from the Seventh Ward in Providence and very active political family. Uh, and, uh, w- you know, we were taught that we live in America, it belongs to us. And if we want it to be reflective of who we are we need to take control of it and we need to have a voice and we need to vote people died for the right to vote women suffered terribly for the right to vote and so that those are the things that we have to do so um it was i guess it was just it was in the pablum as they say (laughs) so uh, you know uh been political all my life i just think that that's uh an important uh an, an, an important aspect of being a good american I have to agree. Well, yes. that's Absolutely. fabulous. Absolutely. So from 18, Costa from Gloucester, Costa go ahead. Gloucester. <laughs> uh, j- just went on, always was involved in whatever local town committee, uh, whatever town I lived in, uh, always involved, uh, involved in state politics. And, and now that we live in this social media, I mean, always connected, social feeds, you know, <laughs> MSNBC, what's going on? <laughs> and actually, we're in a very, today's, it happens to be a very political day here in Rhode Island. Yes. We, we laid Governor uh, uh, Garrahee to rest today, mm-hmm. who was a tremendous governor, and, yes. and I'm old enough to actually remember the flannel shirt. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he did a, <laughs> such a good job uh, through the blizzard, but also through his tenure uh, leading the state. And tonight is Governor Chafee's uh, State of the State address. So... I understand there's... It's a busy day. It's a very busy political day. It's a good thing we have you on today. Well, you're going to be plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are there any highlights from the, that you're expecting to see tonight with uh, Governor Chafee? Well, I'm hearing mm-hmm. that uh, there's some indication that there may be some proposed uh, meal taxes and restaurant taxes uh, in the new budget, and uh, it's not meeting with um, a lot of favor. Let us I say. would say no. Yeah. <laughs> and so we shall see if that comes to pass. But... Um, you know, talking about women in politics, what what occurred to me was uh, the last budget that the governor proposed, and when he first came into office, there was a an, an indication that he wanted to tax salons. Do we remember this? Salon yes, services? Absolutely. And th- it was a woman who started the Facebook page and the rally. She was a wo- female sales uh, salon owner who said, this can't be. Do you remember that? Je- I think her name was Lynn Jennings. I believe that's who it was. And uh, she started this grassroots. I mean, politics is grassroots. Politics is, you know, (coughs) it's it's something when it affects you, Mm -hmm. that's when you say you find a voice. (coughs) And then you find the avenue to get that message out. And they were very, very effective at organizing, rallying, and having their voice heard in that issue. So who knows what's going to come of the restaurant owners? But that was they from were. that was from a, a female that she started that whole thing, That's and and I remember hearing her on the radio, and she said, "I've never been political in my life," and that issue brought her into politics. And politics is not a dirty word, you know. It, it, politics has a just this bad r- reputation, I, you know. I um, I was reading a little blurb today from Roll Call. And 92% of the ads that aired in Florida during this GOP presidential preference primary were negative. Yep. Wow. So people are getting to a, an intolerance of, you know, I was, I was trying to find an analogy. Uh, remember when you were a kid and if you were having an argument with someone on, you know, on the facts. Look, you're entitled to facts. You're entitled to your opinions, but you're not entitled to your facts. And a lot of times, you know, if you ran out of facts, you, you know, you just, you know, and I don't like your shoes. You know, like, <laughs> that's how the... <laughs> and, 
and and so I looked at Florida, and I I just saw these two <coughs> men just act yeah, like children. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you did this, and you have a Swiss bank account, and you and it's like, excu- excuse me, we need jobs do you have a plan yeah mm-hmm. it's so interesting though people are res- people respond to the negative ads that I, I, think I was watching Rachel Maddow or something like that and that's what she was saying she was saying that that's it that's what Mitt Romney resorted to you know I think everybody goes in with the idea that we're gonna try to fight a clean campaign yes but once those polls start dropping yeah the gloves come off and it's like Meow. do you feel it's because um, in the political scene when there are positive plans let's call it that um, and nothing gets accomplished. Let's say you, you you elect someone, and then their plans and their positive, whatever it may be, they get elected through their election, through their 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 year years or whatever it may be. Um, nothing really gets done. That song so, promises promises. Yes, yeah. exactly. So because nothing gets done, at the end of the day, when re-election comes around or when new elections come around, people are just like, I really don't feel like hearing the good things. Let's see what the bad things are to see what this person <laughs> character is like. Are they really going to follow through with? the plans that everyone says they have see i think i think that's part of the problem and i think that one of the one of the issues is this and, you know tip o'neill said all politics is local mm-hmm. so when you have an issue and you can make a change have a voice and you can actually see the needle move you can actually see progress that's what people respond to so when we have these uh, they're almost ethereal um campaign promises and yes and we're going to do this and and then reality steps in um and and things don't necessarily get accomplished to the way you think they should be getting accomplished in 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 politics does move slowly you know it's a it's a process and i think that that that's another thing that is absolutely turning people off is that when you look to washington and you see the absolute gridlock that is occurring there and this part ultra partisan slash and burn politics People are just like they—they—they they, they don't. They—they. They, I don't think they care that I, I have to struggle to pay my child's tuition, or that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pay the electric bill, or I have to make a choice between, you know, buying my child new athletic shoes, and and you know, those are the realities that people face. And when they look to to those uh, institutions, I think they just just generally get disgusted because they have to <coughs> you look. At the end of the day, when you come to work people expect results Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you know the standard that you live to and I think people look to what's going on there and they just they don't see the advancement they don't see the progression of what's going on well it also takes and and at the end of the day I feel like I'm I'm not really very familiar with politics um that then for me this is all a learning process um but I feel like when it comes to politics and when for the presidency I don't feel four years is enough for anyone to actually bring into play the plans that they have as they're being elected um, and I feel that that's the case with every office whatever term for the office is personally I don't think it's long enough and because when it comes to policies and laws it takes such a long time to get things into place and people just have it's not like going to work like personally I'm sorry but I must disagree it's not like coming to work and we come in and and Anthony our boss says okay we need to have this 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 and this done by the end of the day okay there's certain things that can be done but there's certain things that we need some time because we may need a response from someone else who needs to approve something else and by the time it gets back to us it's friday and it started we started it on monday but it doesn't get done until friday because it's out of our control and and i understand what you're saying but at the same time you two actually what? have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so if if if, yeah. if 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 Pat just says, "Is a- Brown is is Amy speaking? Does she have a question?" Because I don't feel like answering it today. <laughs> yeah. You know, nothing's going to get accomplished. And I think that's what people see. Mm-hmm. I think people see that when you know whoever it is, if it's a d- regardless of stripe, if if they're speaking and the other side is going la 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 la, I don't want to hear you. Then it's n- nothing is going to get accomplished. And I think that's the translation, whether that's the case or mm-hmm. not. I think that's what the general public okay. sees. And I, and 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 so and and uh, and you did bring up something. Um, you said you don't think four years is long enough. So well, for some four years maybe too long. Just too long. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, for some, yeah, but for those, but for those that. <laughs> said they had a plan and didn't do anything. Well, it's way too long. Let me tell you, and this is why we're and, here because and we're, we're talking about women in women politics. Women in politics, well, yes. Well, let me tell you that there was uh, just recently, and you might know the name, 
I think it's Gina Raimondo. Yes. I think she came into office with a plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she, in her very measured tones and her very well thought out plan to address a problem, um, showed people of either gender, gender, either party, um, how to accomplish something, how to work within a system that sometimes you pushes know, it away, pushes back, and and I'm in this for whatever. Everybody, you know, everybody brings their own piece, their own agenda, and she was so successful. And as I got to tell you, as a woman, as a Democrat, I am so proud of the work that she did. And I know that not everyone's happy. I'm also I'm, I'm also a, a, a state employee, so she literally gave me a haircut too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think she she looked to a, a, a math problem and she looked to a political problem and she uh, she just approached it in such a terrific way. And that's what women bring to the table. How has the role of women changed in the political scene here in Rhode Island? Well, let me let me tell you this. I I, I pulled some statistics. I did a little homework. Mm. I like homework. I She's do. good at this. I do. Too. <laughs> Carol, I numbers say, are great. Fabulous at this. <laughs> I can't add them because I'm terrible at math, but that's why I was political science. <laughs> um, in 1979, we had in Rhode Island, 8.7 um, percent of our legislators were women. 8.7. Wow. Mm -hmm. The total for the country was 10.3. Okay. We're progressing. Wow. We, nice. Well. well <laughs> No. You ready Go for the ahead. next? You ready for the, the next the chapter? Here. Okay, so 2010, mm -hmm. Rhode Island 22.1 percent. Okay. So from eight to 22, and wow. the total for the nation 24.5. And this is from 78 wow. to 2010. 79 to 2010. Wow. wow. So we've We're come a long way. We have way, come baby, a long, long way. way. A long right. way to go. To go. Absolutely. Yeah. Considering what the the female the the ratio female male population Personally, here, I well, think it should be. 5149. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, but you know, we can dream. <laughs> um, well, you know, we, tell us why that's important. Well, it is important, and, I'll, and this is an opinion, just so you, I know everybody gets crazy when you talk about women in politics. Mm -hmm. I'm, this is not men bashing. Not at all. You no. know, uh, because a lot of times. We're we don't men bash, we no, women I, in power. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, nice um, touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that was the politically correct answer. <laughs> it's only saying that because she's sitting right next to me. <laughs> um, here's the way I feel about it. I feel that women in politics are transformational. I feel that men in politics are transactional. Oh, that's good. Wow. That is very good. Look, I, I just feel like they're there. They, what we, we, obviously, we had, you know, it was men are from Mars, Mars and we're <laughs> from Venus <laughs> or whatever. Nanu, Nanu. N thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go with God. Oh, what's that? Never mind. Um, so, so I feel that when women come to the table, like the salon owners, an issue has brought them there. Okay. And they're there because they want to transform that issue to make something better, different, um, and change something. M I think men get in politics, and when you see the General Assembly at work, and when you watch how they work and how they operate, it, it, it's a, to me it's a different perspective. Women bring a different perspective. They bring the perspective of child care. They bring, they bring a whole host of other things. You know, we know that when more women became doctors, how that transformed health care for women. You know, so I think this you can almost apply the same principles to politics in legislating and making laws that apply to the Let's betterment of women and the and the betterment of, of life in general because women wear so many hats in, in their daily life that we're able to see more of what <laughs> of life. Well, yeah, how, <laughs> many, <laughs> I want to hear this how many statement. women are voting? I mean, do we know in Rhode Island? Like if it were to say how percentage of men versus women, because I would think that women would vote for women 
that no, that's not necessarily, not necessarily true. Yeah. No. Not necessarily. I, and I don't have the they, numbers on that, but that's not necessarily the case. Well, I would like to hear that finish that though, though, because I think women would vote for women if the interests were things like more. If whoever was up there was serving on a platform that had to do with families. So that's why I'd like to see demographics versus who's voting for who and why. Well, I have to do that homework mm -hmm. and, and come back. I have to come back exactly. Right. We'll so how can how can women get involved in, palit in Amy, politics? Look, you know, I know I, you want to run. I, I do. In the future, so. sometime, you know, I don't know, uh, president, <laughs> yes. Um, let's say I do. Let's okay. say I do. Is there, I know almost nothing about politics. Well, it, 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 my advice to you would be, whatever city or town you live in, you have a Republican town committee, you have a, uh, a situate down here, mm -hmm. you have a Democratic town committee, you may have a moderate party. Well, we do have a moderate party. So, you know, you could contact uh, Ken Block and his moderate party through their statewide website. So you would have to pick, you know, you'd have to say, you know what, uh, you know, maybe, and here's the other thing, people get all crazy about party affiliation. People get, you know, and sometimes, I'll, I'll look, I'm the Democratic chair in situate. So, it's like, oh, here comes the Democrat. Here she comes. She's going to want to convert me, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. At the end of the day, we're all here for the betterment of our country. It, that's exactly right. And so what happens is, it, I, it, and to me, it, and you have to remember in Rhode Island, I was just um, at a forum and uh, Senate President Teresa Piva Weed brought something up that was um, very interesting in that many of the, f the women who were our first legislators were Republicans. The trailblazers in Rhode Island were Republican women who got involved and got in the state Senate and in the House of Representatives. Many, many. It has changed since then it is, it, in, just because of the demographics and party affiliations and all that. But a lot of the trailblazers were. Look, we, had, we sent one woman to Congress, Claudine Schneider, mm -hmm. Republican. Yes. Um, and uh, she served from 81 to 91. So here's how you run for office, Amy. You, you contact, this is what I would recommend. Go to the website of uh, uh, Ralph Miles, Secretary of State Miles has a great resource. How to run for or office. You can print and download his whole book. Tells you exactly deadlines, what you have to do. Then you have um, elections.ri.gov, which is the campaign finance wing. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to the Board of Elections because anytime you raise money, you have to account for your donations, who, who, uh, who makes those donations. You can only take personal checks and all the rules for campaign finance, and then you have to file reports. So if I'm running against you, I can see how much you made, who's giving to you, and, you know, that's, it's very transparent. So that you it's can go after them? <laughs> no, I don't go after anyone, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so so, so it's, and it's, it's, it's easy. It's right there. It's at your keyboard. It's at your fingertips. So, I, you know, I encourage anyone to just look, you look at it. Browse around. See you how easy. You started at 18. I so started, you well, started we didn't have we didn't have keyboards. I, I have no, I was but you making know what? postcards, which, which from Gloucester, which, on a copy <laughs> machine, <laughs> which makes me admire you even more because you didn't have something that that laid down the, the groundwork for you to say this is what you have to do. Well, and uh, at any age, it shows that you have an opinion, you have a voice, make it count, do something about it, and uh, go learn how to run for office. Absolutely, and just remember, anytime you you, you need to vote. You need to do this. People died for this right. Yes. Women suffered for this right. You, you just can't let it lie there. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sometimes it's just like, eh, I don't feel like vote. I've voted. I, I'm proud to say I have voted in every election since I was 18 years old. I don't think women give themselves the credit that they deserve to um, for the voice that they have and the voice that they, they could have. In, in politics and, and I don't think they realize how strong that they could be and that they could actually make a difference. We have yes. great examples in Rhode Island to look to. Lieutenant yeah. Governor Elizabeth Roberts, an expert in health care and she you know rose through the ranks in State Senate and Gina Raimondo and, and Teresa Piveweed. So we've come a long way and we have good female role models to look to and we need to look to them and we need to be inspired by them and you know what? Find that one issue. Find that one thing. Yeah. And find a voice and just get out there. Don't forget to vote. So important. <laughs> You're so inspiring. Very, this <laughs> is you. very empowering. Wow. Thank she you. Is. Love okay. it, Carol. Carol, um, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Uh, they can go to situatedemocrats.org. Uh, my email's right there. Carolyn Costa at Gmail. Just email me. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much.